Okay. Um, so in this movie clip, we are going to study the AC characteristic of MS diode. So whenever we are talking about the AC characteristic, you should always come up with uh, the capacitance versus voltage plot of uh, MS diode. Then that's good enough. And uh, in industry, people are monitoring the capacitance versus voltage plot to see if there is any defect and any you know some major issue in fabricating MS diode. Okay, so uh, as the very first step to understand the AC characteristic of MS diode, let's start with uh, MS contact charge distribution. So across the MS contact, how the charged particles are distributed out across the MS diode. So as described in the first line, in a shocky diode, shocky contact, uh, the charge should be stored on either side of MS junction. But that's uh, very straightforward. The charge should be stored in the metal side or in the semiconductor side. Okay. And those charges, you know, charged particles are scattered out here and there across the MS contact. And those scattered charged particles would be moved and, uh, you know, uh, redistributed uh, because of the voltage that you applied, right? So the applied, externally applied bias, V sub A, would modulate uh, the distribution of MS contact charge, okay? That is the basic concept why the capacitance value has been modulated with externally applied bias VA, okay? So again, uh, at thermal equilibrium or for a given DC voltage, the charge across the MS contact has been set at, you know, designated at a certain position. However, if the externally applied bias voltage has been varying and modulating, then the charge or charge the particles within the MS contact should be rearranged, redistributed. That means if the applied voltage is varying, like an AC signal, the charge across the MS contact would be redistributed, simply speaking, the Electrons and holes in semiconductor and metal side can be moved in and out. Okay, so uh, if an AC voltage small VA has been applied in series with the DC bias VA, so let me write down. So in MS diode, you're going to apply DC voltage, that is DC, and uh, AC voltage in connected in series. In other words, if I draw the time versus voltage across the MS diode, so in this case, usually is small V A capital A, small V capital A, uh, for a given DC bias, capital V capital A, the very small tiny amount of small V small A are added up, okay? So this signal value is V A plus small V A, so DC plus AC. So this is uh, the real, you know, voltage value across the MS diode. So uh, AC voltage VA is applied in series with the DC bias VA. The charge, you know, electron holes, you know, here and there, you know, they are charged particle. So charges stored in the shocky contact would be modulated, varied at the frequency of the AC voltage. So frequency means, you know, how fast the signal, AC signal is moving up and down, right? 
So if the frequency with a higher frequency, the charges particle are modulated at a more faster pace. With a lower frequency of AC signal, the movement, the degree of movement of charges across MS contact would be very slow. Okay. And now, uh, as we know that uh, across the MS diode, there is a depletion layer, right? So this depletion layer means that there is a no carriers. No carrier means a no charged particle. That means no charge here, no charge, okay? But this depletion layer with W is very dependent of, uh, you know, how much applied or DC voltage has been up, uh, applied. So depending on the DC voltage, the depletion layer width has been determined and uh, on top of DC voltage, we are going to apply a small AC voltage. So the depletion width would be uh, would become wider and narrower depending on the polarity of uh, AC voltage signal. So plus minus delta W. So I mean that this depletion layer width is slightly modulated. Okay. And uh, here, uh, the authors would like to explain the displacement current. Uh, when you have a chance to take uh, electromagnetic class, Janjagyak in Korean, electro in your electromagnetics class, you have a chance to learn what the physical origin of displacement current is. So the displacement current, it, the concept of displacement current is quite simple. Um, for given AC signal, uh, your you know the charges particle, the charged particle across the shocky diode or shocky contact should be redistributed out. So how fast the voltage has been varying, uh, the charge, uh, the charge depending on the AC signal. Uh, is proportional to each other. So I, I mean, the, uh, suppose that a certain amount of charge has been induced because of the DC bias. On top of that, AC signal has been applied. Okay. So for that, because of that AC signal, the total amount of charge induced in the MS contact has been modified. So the degree of that change can be explained and understood with this uh, uh, equation. dQ dt is proportional to the dVa dt. So if I write down it, rewrite down it again, dQ dt is a displacement current, is proportional to the dVa or dt. And the coefficient of this equation is C, capacitance dVa dt. So the uh, from this equation, uh, we should uh, tackle now what what the capacitance is of MS contact. So going back to the cross-sectional view of MS contact here, you can clearly see that the isolation layer existing in between metal and semiconductor. So it looks like a two. You know, this is a metallic matter and this is a semiconductor is kind of matter so matter to matter in between the insulation layer has been sandwiched between two matter layers so uh, capacitance of this uh, MIM structure can be determined by a uh, dielectric constant of semiconductor and cross-sectional area divided by uh, insulation layer thickness okay so using this concept we can simply derive the capacitance as well, okay? So uh, in this uh, slide, we are gonna study this concept, displacement current across the M uh, MS contact. And because uh, MS contact that we have learned is, uh, has a MIM device structure, so we can simply 
uh, derive the capacitance as a function of dielectric constant, cross sectional area, and depletion layer width, as you have already learned in a general physics class. Okay, that that was uh you know the contents in the previous slide is uh, some kind of basics uh when introducing the uh, capacitance value and the AC characteristic, but the contents that you are looking at in this slide is the you know real and practical one. Uh, maybe in your lab, maybe in your uh, in your job place. So in industry, they are making a MS contact as a you know test element group. In a test element group or a TEG tag group, they are building up the MS contact to see if there is any uh, variation or some unwanted uh, events uh, when they are doping the semiconductors. So how can the capacitance versus voltage data would be utilized to determine uh, shock barrier height as well as to see and to monitor the doping concentration in semiconductor? Uh, let me see. Let's do some mass work first. Capacitance of MS contact is defined as this. You know, dielectric constant of semiconductor depletion layer width and the cross-sectional area. Uh, as we have learned, the depletion layer width can be described as uh, the function of uh, applied voltage. So here in the VA is a DC bias, not AC bias. At, okay. And by rearranging all the terms and you're going to get this equation. Afterwards, you're going to take a square on both sides and then take a inverse value. Okay, then you're going to get this equation. So please do that by yourself. You're going to get this equation by, your, by yourself. And then let's draw. 1 over capacitance square, and here applied voltage. So this 1 over C square would become Y, and this V sub A become X. And draw the curve of this Y is equal to Fx. You can draw it, but it's very simple. Y is equal to what? y is equal to sum x plus sum but here the polarity of the coefficient for x is minus right so the curve would be like that okay all right but in industry in general they're gonna measure the capacitance value when the negative dc by negative dc voltage has been applied so most likely they're gonna get this data point okay so you can extrapolate or make a trend line based on those uh, data point then you're gonna get this uh, straight line then the thing that we can get and obtain from the extra extrapolated curve is uh, this slope and x intercept so from the slope, take a look at this equation again. The slope is this one, right? So slope is minus 1 over Q and D, epsilon S, A. So Q is a unit charge, constant. That ND is a, you know, doping concentration in semiconductor. And epsilon S is a dielectric constant of semiconductor, which is kind of material constant. And A is cross-sectional area that you have designed. So A would be varying, but not too much. So from this slope, you're going to estimate the doping concentration first. Okay. And what about uh, the thing that we can get from the X intercept? So X intercept is, you know, this guy, right? 
2 times VBI divided by Q and D epsilon s a square. Oops, here I forgot it. Okay, so this axis intercept is equal to 2 times VBI. Okay, so x intercept means when this y axis is zero, right? So then uh, the VA value when y is zero, that is the x intercept. So you're gonna get this value. So from the uh, value of x intercept, you can double check the built in potential, okay? So this uh, once a built-in potential and a doping concentrations are obtained from the CV data, capacitance voltage data, I mean the CV plot above this plot, not real CV, one over C square versus VA, but anyhow it's the CV data, right? So once VBI and ND are known, then what we can what can we obtain and what can we estimate? Yeah, the answer is a Schottky barrier height. So how come? How do we know the Schottky barrier height from those uh, two information? As we have learned before, the built-in potential of MS contact is defined as uh, you know Schottky barrier height minus uh, this is flat band. EC minus EF, okay, and this EC minus EF is very associated with the doping concentration as shown in here. So since we know the ND and we know the VBI, then we can estimate the Schottky barrier height, okay. So just in case you have forgotten how to get this equation uh, again in MS contact. So this value, you see, is EF, S, EF um, in uh, equilibrium. So this is a Schottky barrier height. This is N type, okay? So high BN is from here edge of EC down to the Fermi energy level. And at equilibrium, at thermal equilibrium, this EF is constant across MS contact. And this uh, value is defined as Q times VBI, and the rest of it is this EC minus EF, okay, in the flat band region or bulk region, okay. So Q times pi BN is equal to Q times VBI plus EC minus EI at flat band. Then you're gonna get VBI, Q times VBI is equal to Q pi bn minus ec minus ei at flat bed. okay so you're gonna get this equation so using the cv um, measure the cv data we're gonna estimate the shocky barrier height as well so across the ms contact how much shocky barrier height has been you know fabricated obtained then you should watch out the cv data and uh, draw the extrapolated line and double check the slope and axis intercept then you're gonna obtain the doping concentration in semiconductor part of your ms contact and the built-in potential from the axis intercept then you can quantitatively estimate the shocky barrier height of your ms contact okay so in that sense cv data is key enough and necessary required okay so in this slide you can see that uh you know the summary uh, of electrical characteristic of ideal ms contact so if semiconductor is n type or p type if work function of matter side is higher or smaller then we're gonna have a uh, four different cases of idea ms contact so please train yourself to draw the energy band diagram for each case four different cases and which one gives us a rectifying characteristic which one gives us a omic contact characteristic okay
And one more thing that we have learned in this week is, you know, this uh, tunneling event would give us or provides us with some very simple engineering solution to achieve very small shaky barrier height. Okay, so as described here, since it is very tough to achieve small shaky barrier height, practical omic contacts are made and fabricated by heavily doping the semiconductor part. Then uh, since the depletion layer width is below 10 nanometers, so electrons can move back and forth in both directions. So the current flow across MS contact is uh, from matter to semiconductor as well as from semiconductor to matter. So in both directions, uh, the current can be flown. That is, you know, ohmic contact. And uh, in MS junction, the charge has been stored across the MS junction. And mm -hmm. so for a given DC bias, on top of that, we are going to apply a very small uh, AC signal. And then we, we would like to, uh, by accident, on purpose, on purpose, we are going to uh, redistribute it, redistribute it, uh, the charge of particle. Then afterwards, uh, the capacitance value would be modulated across MS contact. So from this uh, concept, uh, by flowing displacement current, we're gonna we are gonna measure the capacitance versus uh, applied voltage. Then uh, from the CB data, we're gonna obtain the slope and x intercept. Then uh, in the end, we're gonna quantitatively estimate the Schottky barrier height. So in idea MS contact, the Schottky barrier height uh, is very dependent of the work function difference between matter and semiconductor. But in real MS contact, to estimate and monitor the Schottky barrier height, we should obtain and measure the capacitance voltage plot first of your MS contact. Afterwards, we're going to directly uh, estimate the value of shocky barrier height. Okay, that is you know you know kind of a conventional way uh, to see and to monitor the shocky barrier height of your MS contact in your IC chip. The IC chip can be DRAM, the IC chip can be NAND flash, or IC chip can be analog circuit chip, free VCO, PLL, you no. Know, LNA, low noise of amplifier, or any type of amplifier, whatever. Okay. All right. So from now on, we're gonna study the PN junction, and this is the last topic of uh, this semester, this uh, lecture. So in PN junction diode is quite similar to the MS diode uh, in terms of electrical characteristics. For you know, under Ford bias, the current is exponentially increasing, but under reverse bias, the total amount of current across PN junction diode is very tiny and infinite, a very small negligible. But uh, whatever the reverse bias voltage is, the magnitude of uh, reversal, magnitude of uh, saturation current is very small, tiny, and negligible. It's quite similar, to, you know, in terms of uh, IV characteristic of PN junction diode, uh, its IV characteristic is quite similar to the IV characteristic of MS diode. Okay, and on the right hand side, you can see the uh, circuit symbol for diode. And the MS diode, the PN junction diode, both are the simple diode. So we're going to use this identical circuit symbol as shown on the right hand side here. Okay. And uh, usually the N side is grounded and P side is uh, the voltage that we applied. So this is uh, the, you know, very general uh, biasing scheme. Okay. And in terms of making, fabricating PN junction diode for a given P type silicon substrate, we're going to inject donors atoms into the P type silicon substrate. Then on surface, we're going to get the, P and junction diode. Okay, uh, after, definitely on top of the n-type region, we are gonna deposit the matter, and this uh, p-type, you know, to deliver the voltage signal into the p-type semiconductor, definitely we are gonna make a MS uh, contact 
OMI contact. Okay, so to implement OMI contact of across MS dia MS contact, definitely this area semiconductor part should be very heavily dumped. Okay, so this uh, metal line should be grounded, and this metal line we're gonna apply as applied voltages throughout this matter. Then this PN diode is now working as a diode. Okay, so this is the real image how how to get the uh, uh, PN junction diode in IC chip. But uh, later on, we are gonna study some more physics. What's going on across the junction? Okay, across the PN junction here. So if I rotate this plot by ninety degree, you know you're gonna get PN and of course matter and of course P plus plus and the um, matter. So this M P plus plus P N M. This is the real, you know, real one you know, that you can see in IC chip. But in this lecture, we're gonna study some more details how the holes are moving across P N junction diode, how the electron is moving across P N junction diode. So most of the uh, discussions and uh, parts and explanation will be focused on the PN junction because we have learned uh, how the electron and holes are moving across the MP plus and across the MSN. So we have learned this part and this part. So P plus plus and P junction. P plus P junction. This junction is quite uh, non uniformly doped silicon, right? Non uniformly doped silicon, as we have learned. You can draw the NH band diagram across the x direction, P bubble to P, right? So you can do that. And this is, a, you know, quite a resistance register. So, you know, this MP should has a very small. Uh, resistance value and people pull P this part should has should also have very small resistance and this M and N type MS junction should be also very ohmic like then this PN okay these two parts P and N are the key area across this region okay all right, so everything other than PN junction has been learned and studied. So now we are the last thing that left behind is a PN junction. So we are going to study some more details on the PN junction in the next movie clip. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. See you.